Warren and Charlie, this is a question. Actually, we got a, a handful of questions on this topic. This is probably the best formulation of it. Uh, Warren, uh, you have been a uh, longtime outspoken Democrat. With all the talk about socialism versus capitalism taking place among Democratic presidential candidates, do you anticipate an impact on Berkshire in the form of more regulations, higher corporate taxes, or even calls for breakups among the many companies we own, we own if they were to win? And how do you think about your own politics as a fiduciary of our company, and at the same time as someone who has said that simply being a business leader doesn't mean you've put your citizenship in a blind trust? Yeah, I have said that, that you do not put your citizenship in a blind trust, but you also don't speak on behalf of your company. Uh, uh, you, speak, you do speak as a citizen if you speak, and therefore you have to be careful about when you do speak because it's going to be assumed you're speaking on behalf of your company. Berkshire Hathaway uh, certainly in 54 years has, has never and will never uh, made a contribution uh, to a presidential candidate. I don't think we've made a contribution to any political candidate, but I, I don't want to say for 54 years that... that uh, we don't do it now. We, have, we operate in several regulated industries, and, and our, our railroad and our utility, as a practical matter, they have to have a presence in Washington or and in the state legislatures in which they operate. So they have, we have, we have some, a few, I don't know how many, political action committees, uh, which existed when we bought it, uh, we bought the companies at, at, at subsidiaries. And uh, I think that unquestionably they, they, they make some contributions uh, simply to achieve the same access as their competitors. I mean, if the trucking industry is going to lobby, I'm sure the railroad industry is going to lobby. Uh, but the general, well, the rule is, I mean, that people do not pursue their own political interests with your money here. We've, we've had one or two managers over the years, for example, that would, would do some fundraising where they were fundraising from people who were suppliers to them or something of the sort. And if I ever find out about it, that ends promptly. Uh, but this, my position is, at Berkshire is not to be used to further my own political beliefs, but my own political beliefs can be expressed uh, as a person, not as a representative of Berkshire. Uh, uh, when a campaign is important. I, don't, I try to minimize it, but, I, I, but uh, there, it's no secret that in the last election, for example, I, I raised money. I won't give money to PACs. I, I accidentally did it one time. I didn't know it was a PAC. But uh, uh, I don't do it, but I've raised, I've raised substantial sums. I don't like the way money is used in politics. I've written op-ed pieces for the New York Times in the past on uh, the influence of money in politics. I, I had spent some time with John McCain many years ago before McCain, McCain fine gold and uh, on ways to try to uh, uh, limit it, but the world has developed in a different way. Uh, on your question about uh, the, the, I will just say I'm a card-carrying capitalist um, but I, <laughs> and I, I believe we wouldn't be sitting here except for the market system and the rule of law and some things that are embodied in this country. Uh, so I, you don't have to worry about me uh, changing in that manner, but I also think that uh, capitalism does involve regulation. It involves taking care of people who are left behind, particularly when the country gets enormously prosperous. But beyond that, uh, I have no Berkshire podium for pushing anything. Charlie? Well, I think we're all in favor of some kind of a government social safety net in a country as prosperous as ours. What a lot of us don't like is the vast stupidity with which 
parts of that social safety net are managed by the government. It'd be much better if we could do it, but it more wisely. But I, I, I think it also might be better if we did it more liberally. Yeah, one of the reasons we're involved in this effort along with J.P. Morgan and Amazon with Jamie Dimon and Jeff Bezos on the medical question is we do have as much money going, 3.3 uh, or 3.4 trillion, we have as much money going to medical care as we have funding the federal government. And, and that's, it's gone from 5 to 17 percent or 18 percent, while actually the amount going to the federal government has stayed about the same at 17 percent. So we hope we hope there's a uh, some major private improve, ma major improvements from the private sector, uh, because I I generally think the private sector does a better job than the public sector in most things, uh, but uh, I also think that if the private sector doesn't do something, uh, you'll you'll get a different sort of answer, and I think I think. I like to think that the private sector can come up with a better answer than, than uh, the public sector in that respect. Uh, but uh, I will probably, it depends who's nominated, but I voted, I've voted for plenty of Republicans uh, uh, over the years. I even ran for delegate to the Republican National Convention in 1960. Uh, and, um, uh, but uh, we are not, I don't think the country will, will go into socialism uh, in, uh, in 2020 or in 2040 or 2016. <laughs> Hello, Charlie Mungo and uh, Warren Buffett, my idols. Um, I'm Terry from Shanghai Judge P Fund, which aim to catch the best investment opportunity in that era. So my question is, as we all know, 5G is coming. It is said that the mode of all industry will be challenged in 5G era. So what is the core competence that we should master if Bookshare Hathaway wants to catch the best investment opportunities in next era? Thank you. Well, there's no core competence at the very top of Berkshire. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> but we, the subsidiaries that will be involved in developments relating to 5G or any one of all kinds of things that are going to happen in this world, uh, you know, the utility of LNG at, at, uh, in the railroad or all those kinds of questions. We have people in those businesses that... Uh, know a lot more about them than we do. And, 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 and you know, it, it, we, we count on our managers to anticipate what is coming in their business. And then sometimes they talk to us about it. Uh, uh, but uh, we do not run that from a central, on a centralized basis. And uh, um, Charlie, do you want to have anything to add to that? Do you know anything about 5G? I don't know. Well, you probably know a lot about 5G. No, I know very little about 5G. But I do know a little about China. And uh, we have bought things in China, and I, my guess is we'll buy more. Yeah. But, I mean, we basically want to have a group of managers, and we do have a group of managers, who are on top of their businesses. I mean, you saw something that showed BNSF and, 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 and Berkshire Hathaway Energy and Rubers all, all there. That, uh, those people know their businesses. They know, what's, they know what changes are likely to be ahead. Uh, sometimes they find things that they can cooperate on between their businesses, but we don't try to run those from headquarters. And, and uh, that may mean, that may have certain weaknesses at certain times. I think net is, it's been a terrific uh, benefit for Berkshire. But, uh, uh, our managers, to a great degree, own their businesses. And, and, and they, 
we want them to feel a sense of ownership. We don't want them to be lost in some massive conglomerate and nobody that where they get directions from this group, which is a subgroup of that group. And I could tell you a few horror stories from, from uh, uh, companies we bought when they tell us about their experience under such an operation. So we, uh, 